So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute, man. And we back with some more mind-blowing discoveries of 2023. All right? So listen here, bro. We got the top 10 classified government programs that got leaked to the world. <laughs> now, I know a lot of y'all sitting there like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's a lot of things going on that we aren't privy to, right? Some stuff I don't want to be privy to. Some things I feel like we should be privy to or what's going on or what's taking place, but that's neither here nor there. Nor there. So we're going to check this video out, man. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. And let's see what these programs are about. What's up? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. We're talking about some leaked secrets, some leaked government secrets. Here are the top 10 classified government programs that got leaked to the world. Number 10, the FBI files on Bigfoot. Yeah, let's talk about those. Why not? Because... Wait, 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 wait. We got files? <laughs> I know of sightings, but we got files, meaning bunches of cases that they've had to look into? The FBI okay. files on Bigfoot. Yeah, let's talk about those. Why not? Because they exist, apparently. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, had all of his FBI files released in response to the Freedom of Information Act back in 2019. The files contain correspondence between the FBI and individuals who claim to have evidence or sightings of Bigfoot from the 1970s all the way to the 1990s. The FBI conducted limited analysis on some of these items submitted, including hair and tissue samples. We got some Bigfoot DNA. He's walking by scratching and we found a hair or two. They ultimately concluded that the samples were of no scientific value, but they're still files, which is terrifying. The files also contain internal memos discussing how to respond to calls about Bigfoot, but overall, the FBI's involvement with the creature was sadly quite minimal. I know, I want him to be real too. I really want him to exist. He'd be funny to bump into on the street with that goofy walk. He has a but wait a minute though. I, I I was saving. I want to go back and read that file. So hold on. I'm trying to get back to it. Let me find it. There it is right there. It says, Dear Mr. Blank. I ain't going to say his name, but it's on here if y'all want to read it. The errors which you recently delivered to the FBI laboratory on behalf of the Bigfoot information. They actually wrote Bigfoot information. Wow. And, ex and exhibition have been examined by transmitted incident light microscope. The examination included a study of what morphological characteristics such as a root structure uh meta i can't see what that is something structure a cuticle thickness in addition to scout cast okay also the heirs were compared directly with their heirs of known origin under a comparison microscope it was concluded as a result of these examination that the heirs are dear uh d or family origin what is a d or d e o r what is that family origin the hair sample you submit it as being returned as an enclosure to the letter. Sincerely yours, Assistant Director FBI. So they actually had been taken. I thought these were just, I don't know, just sightings, people citing it and putting it out there on the internet for people to see. I didn't know they went as far as to get FBI involved into it. And have people actually take things that they found samples and go into a laboratory and test them out and see where the, where the connection lies or what they can find about, out about it. So this is actually, and this was 1977, February 24th of 1977. So I guess we can say that this whole Bigfoot sighting has been around as long as most of us have been alive, bro, which is pretty interesting i i really never thought it was that serious until now hmm. a powerful stride bigfoot eh? he has like those you know it's all in the quads for him for sure number nine full house during World War II, the United States and Britain, they would secretly create these maps, tiny little maps, these cheat sheets almost, that could help prisoners of war escape from German camps. Now these maps were then printed on thin paper and disguised as regular playing cards. How badass is that? The cards were designed so that they could be peeled apart to then reveal a detailed map of a specific area that would help prisoners navigate safely 
away anywhere else is great. The decks were often given to wow. prisoners by aid organizations or distributed by covert operatives, which I gotta say, what a scary job that would be. That's like some glorious bastards type stress right there. Playing cards, dealing them out to the right people. That is so brave. Oh my gosh. The fear of being caught, I couldn't even imagine. The plan was successful in helping many prisoners escape and it's considered a remarkable example of resourcefulness and bravery on all ends during a time of war. That's again. I can't. Y'all ever wonder why prison, the prison system is like, okay, no, they can't have weights and they can't have this. Like I knew I had some family members in prison back in the day, right? And when you would try to send them stuff, it, it had to be a certain way. And now you see why it has to be in the package, can't be opened, it can't be this. It they have a list of criteria that it is, and then some of them you can only get stuff from the commissary and and stuff like that. So. You see why, dating back to this long, where they've been figuring out ways to get and infiltrate and figure out to get prisoners what they what they want them to have to help them escape. That's, that's this has been going on for a while. Can't even shuffle cards, let alone do this. Are you kidding me? Number eight, right. Project Seesaw. In the 1960s, the US military explored the possibility of weaponizing lightning as part of a program called, you guessed it, Project Seesaw. Yeah, weaponizing lightning, like they're Thor, I guess. The goal was to use rockets to inject chemicals into thunderstorms, triggering lightning strikes that could then be directed towards enemy targets with thin wires. Now, it sounds insane, it definitely was, didn't quite work out. The project was ultimately, thankfully, abandoned due to technical and logistical challenges. Yeah, you can't predict where a lightning strike is gonna happen, and the difficulty of accurately targeting them as well, it's not gonna work out, we're not- Don't say we can, because that's gonna have a lot of people speaking up and screaming at you, bro, because a lot of people feel like the government is in control of the weather as well. If you haven't heard that, look that up, I promise you, I'm not just making that up. <laughs> Some people feel like the government has a way to control the weather. Tony Stark, we're not doing the Avengers weaponry stuff. There's also concerns about the potential environmental impact of the program. Can't just send shit into clouds, guys. Despite its failure, Project Seesaw remains an example of how far humans will go in the name of warfare. Weaponized lightning? Listen to yourself. Number seven, Iran military dolphins. Back in the 1990s, Iran what? reportedly began training dolphins for military purposes, which sounds so crazy it's almost funny in a way. I don't know, it reminds me of sharks with laser beams attached to their foreheads. Sounds made up, it sounds insane. These military dolphins are trained for many tasks, including detecting underwater mines, locating enemy divers, and identifying underwater obstacles. Again, mm. kind of hilarious, kind of terrifying. The use of animals in military ops is sadly not new. With dolphins and sea lions, they've been trained before by various countries for harbor defense. However, the program in Iran has not been independently verified, and there is little information available about its current status. So, sleep in fear, I guess. These dolphins are off the radar. They're actually below the radar. Number six, Nimitz UFO. Back in 2004, a group of US Navy pilots led by Commander David Fraber encountered a unidentified, it was a UFO, found a UFO in the sky while conducting a training exercise right off the coast of California. This object was dubbed the Tic Tac, apparently it displayed advanced capabilities that were unlike any known aircraft ever. In 2017, the Pentagon declassified these videos of the encounter and confirmed that it was part of a larger program called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. The incident sparked widespread interest and debate about the possibilities of extraterrestrial life existing and the government's role in investigating them. Yeah, what's, what's going on? I don't know. Comment down below. Do you believe in aliens? I kind of do. Be weird if you didn't, right? All Either way, this this one clip here keeps finding its way back to us for some strange reason. We've seen it on several different videos. A lot of people are talking about it, and it's beyond viral at this point. Yes, it's something to this, bro. Like, I don't know if they waited until now, but it's, it just keeps popping back up for a reason. All that space out there, we're the only ones. Number five, Operation <laughs> Snowbird. Field. I thought losing my phone was bad. Huh, boy, here we go. Back in the 60s, a US Air Force plane carrying lots of nuclear materials, it crashed in the Himalayan mountains near the border between India and China. What? Just the thing you want. The crash site was difficult to access, obviously, where it crashed, and the US government mounted a secret mission codenamed Operation Snowbird 
The mission was to recover the materials, I mean ideally. The mission was hampered by the harsh terrain and altitude sickness among the recovery team. It was almost next to impossible. Although some of the plutonium was recovered, thankfully, a significant amount was left behind and still remains missing to this day. Number four, Big Brother. Great. Great. I hope they put that out to the people. If not, y'all make sure y'all share this video because if people go up there and, and not even knowing that's out there. This is getting ridiculous. There is watching. Even allies of the United States aren't safe here. Thanks to Edward Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, Spain, and even themselves. That's fun. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones. They were spying on 35 world leaders, not just random people. World leaders, that's pretty invasive. One of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after they found out and said that this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. That's a, that's a hard quote, that one hits the heart, really. Uh, but, 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 but now as you hear this, you're thinking, well, hey, Taylor, I'm not a world leader. What's the big deal here? What do I care? Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. Apparently they monitored around 60 million calls in one month, randomly, so. Yeah, world leader or not. Better whisper on the phone, better hang up. It's time for people to get it out their head that they're not listening to us. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Get it, it let it sink in. They're listening. And if whatever you say can trigger them to listen to, certain words, certain phrases, things like that can trigger them to tap into your phone to see what's going on or what you may be talking about. So if you're walking around aimlessly thinking, hmm, ah, they not. Yes, they are, bro. You see the whole thing going on with TikTok right now? Why do you think they're doing all of that type of stuff? Exactly. So to think that now, do I walk around and cover up every camera or everything? It is what it is at this point. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And that's what I say at this point. But I'm not naive to the fact that they're listening. No way. Still pretty jarring. Number three, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, pretty recent, scary, personal information from 191 million voters was all leaked to the public online. Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. Now Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker because they exist. They're called white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploiting them. That's pretty cool. It's like some Tony Stark stuff. That's the Donnie difference right there. They don't ruin the world. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, and emails, even those stupid emails you had back in the day, you name it. Things you don't want other people finding out was all let to the public. And it was all let out to third parties. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. I mean, if you have any hints, comment down below, tag them, right? CSO online and databreaches.net suggested that the information here more than likely came from software provider called Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gilliam announced that that was not the case and that they did not create the database. Although, people lie, so who really knows? He conceded that it is possible that some of the information it contains may have come from the data that they make available for free to campaigns. So a third party took it and then ran with it. That's terrifying. It's almost worse than if he leaked it himself. Number two, WikiLeaks war logs. Oh, this one was pretty big. I definitely remember this going down. In Stockholm, buried around 100 feet below street level is an old nuclear bunker. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks. Yeah, pretty important, pretty spooky stuff. Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker. Stored behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. So it's not going anywhere and you're definitely not getting in, no way. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published army field reports from earlier, back in 2004. Now, one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war logs, out of the 109,000 in total. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics, which changes a lot of things, changes a lot of numbers around, looks not great. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009 alone. It was a big leak. And finally, number one, hide your money. Putting your money in your mattress sounds a lot safer than, well, how I'm about to finish. Let's do it. Boy, that statement, if that ain't one of the truest statements right now in these day and times, bro, 
it, I've heard way more people in the past month or so say, I need to go back to hiding in the mattress, back to the mattress. Now, do I think they need to be announcing that out to the world? No, because when people come to try to, where they gonna, where they gonna look at? It's your mattress. But anyway, I get the expression though. That's what you need to say, the expression. Back in 2016, journalists all over the world were looking into the Panama Papers. Basically, it was a plethora of leaked documents, just a, a loot bag of all things bad. These all came from a law firm, Mossack Fonseca. Now, the operation here was that the firm would help the super rich hide their money in these offshore tax havens. And before you ask, yes, they got caught, and yes, this whole thing was shut down. In total, there were 140 politicians from 50 countries who were all in on it. They were all busted, including the Saudi Arabian crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, and Iceland's former prime minister, Sigmundur David Gunnlaugsson. Basically, lock your phone, delete all your files, just make another identity for yourself. I don't know, things are scary out there. Be safe, lock everything, password protect. Do the high school teacher security questions. Why not, you know what I mean? I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, keep being you, and we'll see you next. Man, what is the criteria to become a politician these days, huh? You gotta have a history of being grimy, huh? Just untrustworthy, just shady, practices if that's what it takes in your end because man what we hear from a lot of these politicians man you know what i mean like ah, oh, i get everybody has a past but man man that and being a liar oh that and being a liar i think those are the criteria right there you can do that oh <laughs> yeah we think you should get elected yeah no but um, y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what y'all thought of these these programs that were leaked, man. The top ten classified government programs that got leaked to the world. If you were alive around some of those, like the '77 um, Bigfoot sightings, FBI documents, let us know in the comment section what was going on at the time. Did y'all hear about it? Was it made known, or was it kept a secret? And you're just now hearing about it now through this video. How does that make you feel? Put it in the comment section. And y'all stick around and stay tuned, man. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.